So now we've completed all of our cost variances, the last variances we need to consider are our sales variances or our revenue variances. When we're looking at our sales variances, we have two different considerations. First of all, did we sell more or less units than we had originally planned for? And the second thing we will consider is whether our selling price per unit was more or less than we had originally planned. So let's have a look at an example to see how we calculate each of these two sales variances. So we're told in the question our original standards from our budgeting at the start of the year. So our total cost per unit was £57 with the standard selling price of £70, giving us a standard profit margin of £13 per unit. And we budgeted to sell 1,000 units. And then we have our actual results. So we have actually sold 1,250 units at a selling price of £68 per unit. So first of all, we will calculate our sales volume variance. Our sales volume variance is calculated using the following formula. So we look at our actual sales minus our budgeted sales and multiply by the standard profit margin. Okay, well, plugging these figures then in from our exercise, our actual sales were 1,250 units minus our budgeted sales of 1,000 units, and we said our standard profit margin per unit was £13. So our sales volume variance then, when we work that through, is a positive figure of 13,750. So it is favourable. And why do we have a favourable sales variance? Well, because we have sold 250 units more than we had originally planned. That's good news for the company, so we have a favourable variance. Our second variance then is our sales price variance. Again, we have a key formula we have to remember in order to calculate our price variance. To calculate our price variance, we look at the actual price minus the standard price and multiply by our actual sales. Putting this in then to our, just plugging in our information from the exercise, our actual price, we are told, was £68 per unit. Our standard price we set at the start of the year was £70. And our actual sales were 1,250 units. So we get a variance, a negative figure, of 2,500. So it is adverse. And why do we have an adverse sales price variance? Well, because clearly the selling price we have charged throughout the course of the year has been lower than we originally planned, meaning our revenue per unit has been lower than expected, resulting then in an adverse variance. And that is how we calculate our two sales variances.